We praise you, we worship you, we adore you. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. Holy Spirit, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. Thank you, Holy Trinity. You are our God, our Lord. And everything we can think and look for and love. Thank you for this very moment. Lord, we all gathered in your name to fellowship with you and to love you and to understand your word. Thank you for being present with us because your word says that two or three are gathered in your name. You are here amongst us. Lord, thank you for all these young people. You have created them fearfully and wonderfully. You have designed them like beautiful vessels so they could, they could go out and share your word to the ends of the world. Thank you, Lord. Help them understand your word more and more and let their light shine upon this word with the knowledge of your word. Thank you for this beautiful child of yours, Elston. Thank you for the gift that you've given him to share the word. Lord, we surrender this session unto you. Whatever we hear from Elston is from you, Lord. His vocal cords, but your words. And through these words, we are growing and nourishing each and every day. We praise you. We thank you. And we ask you to bless us with more and more wisdom. So when we lack, when we feel weak, we remember, we renew our mind and remember to ask you for wisdom because that's, we get that just from you, Lord. We thank you for every one of us present here today. And we also bring to you who cannot make it for this special session. And in a special way, I pray for all the youngsters of the world, Lord, so you might find laborers, whichever corner it may be, and your laborers find these young people and fill them with the knowledge of your world and all spiritual understanding. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. And over to Sonia. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, uh, God's beloved. Baba, put yeah. your video on. Yeah. Let's put videos on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, welcome, uh, God's beloved. We are the ones whom Jesus loves. And we are chosen by our Father. And he chose us to be his most precious treasure. And uh, thank you, everyone, for answering Jesus' love call to come and fellowship with him. So praise, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I think Evie, you know his name? Yes, Evie. Uh, recap? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so for the recap, uh, last week, you read in 2 Peter 1, 15, which says, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you nice and loud. Okay, good. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 15 says, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. This tells us that we should not forget what Peter told us about. 
2 Peter 1.16, which says, For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power. Tell, this tells us that Peter was an eyewitness of Jesus' power in the transfiguration and that he was not making up stories. We learned that glory is seeing God's invisible power with our physical eyes. We also read about the transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 6. We learned in, Hebrew, in Hebrews 1, 3, that Jesus is the perfect representation of God's essence. Therefore, since Jesus didn't give out sickness, that means sickness is because of man, not God. Mm. We learned that gospel is, the, is only the word of God that sets you free. Uh, that is the end of the recap. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank you, you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. you, Evan. No problem. Anyone has a testimony? Or can I share something? What's happening with your internet, Sonia? It's breaking. Can't hear. Ah, now you can breaking. hear. Yeah, it's breaking. Now you can hear. Breaking. Breaking, breaking. Yeah, Sorry. it's breaking. Now you can hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you, yeah. Okay. Anyone has a testimony? Would like to share something? No. no. So no. No. So we can go. We we can hear Sonia. We can hear you. Okay. 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 So we can. We are joining can now. <laughs> yeah. Alistair, over to you. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, praise God. So let's we can start. Praise God. Okay, so uh, this, you know, this is what we are going to learn today. We will learn next week also. We'll continue, but this is something that is very, very important for us to understand because this truth, when I understood, it was one of the truth that said uh, that that helped me make changes. Okay. And it will also help you to make changes and it will help you also to live a life more focused on the unseen world than the seen world. Yes? How many of you yes. are interested? Sorry, what was the question, Elston? How many of you are interested to know? Oh, yes, definitely we are. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Maria so, raised a big hand. Yeah. Okay, so the, 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 the thing is about heart and heart. So who's the person who has heart and heart? The one who's sensitive to the things of the world and who's not at all sensitive to the word of God. Okay, okay, yeah. Who doesn't abide by the word of God. Who does not abide by the word of God. Okay, very good answer. Okay, so many times we think, okay, maybe at, when you were the old person, we think a person who has hardened his or her heart is a stubborn or cruel or wicked person, right? How many of you believe that a hardened heart person is a person who is stubborn, cruel, wicked? Okay, that's what many of us think that a person with a hard heart is a person who is very stubborn. He's very wicked. He's rebellious. Praise God. Okay, Praise before, God. before we go and see in the Bible, write down. When we think of someone, when we think of someone, when we think of someone with a hard heart, with a hard heart. When we think of someone with a hard heart, 
we usually think we usually think of someone we usually think of someone who is stubborn or rebellious who is stubborn or rebellious that's what many of us think even i thought stubborn heart means a person who is very stubborn who is very cru cruel who wants to, who know who wants to revenge who wants to take revenge who does not love who is a very wicked person who wants to prove himself right pride arrogance and all that yeah yes 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 okay so we when we think of someone with a hard heart we usually think of someone who is stubborn or rebellious however 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 a hard heart however a hard heart a hard heart can also describe the heart of a person however a hard heart can also describe the heart of a person the heart of a person who simply disregards the word who simply disregards the word like how priya said a person who is sensitive to the things of this world and not are not sensitive to the things from the word of god that's a hard heart person who disregards the word so however a hard heart can also describe the heart of a person who simply disregards the word last point a person who does not consider the word a person who does not consider the word who does not consider the word has hardened their hearts against it so how does how do you make your heart sensitive when you consider how do you make hardened how do you make your heart hardened when you don't consider something now your heart eventually becomes hardened to that a person who does not consider the word as hardened their hearts against it they are focused on other ways of life rather than god's way they are focused on other ways of life rather than god's way this god so how many times uh many times we try if 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 we are in addictions if if there is a son that is in addictions will the mother ask for prayer for the child to get out of the addictions or will the prayer be to get to encounter christ which one get out of addiction get out of addiction that's what many times prayer is we are focused on other ways of life we are focused on the worldly way of life rather than god's way the world will say believe in yourself you can do this trust in yourself have confidence in yourself that's how the world teaches us the way to live but god's word teaches us another way of life and this way of life to understand it it is only through the word Prescott are you understanding Yes Yes Yeah yes so oh, death and life are in the power of the tongue correct Correct Yeah so when i speak life means i will experience life when i speak death i will experience death so when a person has a, some kind of sickness we go and pray over them we speak life but we see the sickness does not leave the pain does not leave do you know why 
they are more sensitive to their uh, situation it's because our hearts are hardened you know we are we are, you know our hearts are hardened you know to what our hearts are hardened because we think that words don't have power how many times we say you're a, you're a donkey you are a so many things you know there are so many unlimited things we say you're a dog you're a doll you're so many things we say right do we really mean it you are a stupid you are a fool you are you are a failure you are this you are that do we really mean it no no do we really mean it no no but is a, are we trained yes yeah you know what is that training we are trained to speak words but they will not really happen we speak words but they will not really happen and that's how we are trained that's how that's why our hearts are hardened and that's why because we don't see uh, manifesting we don't see the person getting healed we don't see the person getting set free because our hearts are trained that the words we speak are don't have power so when we say by the wounds of jesus are healed that actually those we are trained in that way for those words not to have any power yes yes yeah yes yes that's how we are trained we are trained to speak words but they not really happen and that's why when it comes to the word of god we speak words but they don't really come into manifestation it's because of the hardness of the heart that's why i always heard papa say this and unlearn what you have learned right unlearn yes. what you have learned what does that mean we have hardened our hearts for so many years now we are supposed to undo it we are supposed to unlearn it yeah because mm. that knowledge that knowledge is what is making our hearts hardened now always remember i can either be hardened to god and sensitive to the devil or i can be sensitive to god and hardened to the devil praise god so many a times many a times we are hardened to god and sensitive to the devil put the scripture james 47 james chapter 4 verse 7 James chapter 4 verse when i make my heart sensitive to god now by default my heart is hardened to the devil and that's when he flees from me but when i'm sensitive to the devil now by default my heart is hardened to the word of god and that's what many a times we do our hearts are hardened to, to the word of god yes yes yeah yep. yeah and 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 we have to check we have to check from morning till night what are the words i am receiving and what are the words i'm speaking that's why i have to scan the thoughts because it is these thoughts that my life will be based on if my thoughts are not in line with the word now when i accept it my heart is becoming hardened and hardened and hardened and hardened in such an extreme way that now we look at god 
we no longer look at god as god as the immortal god as the incorruptible god but now we look at him as uh, it's just a you know god is just a god that's all and then we look we get a wrong understanding and we look at him as a punish punishment is coming god means punishment right but yes. why are we looking at god in such a way because our hearts are hardened our hearts are really hardened that means my heart is sensitive to the world and my heart are you know the hearts our hearts are sensitive to the devil and the devil is putting those thoughts in my mind praise god praise god okay, let's go to mark chapter 6 was number 35 is I someone willing to read okay does anyone want to read the verse and read come on yes yeah, yeah. Stephen Did also read ten. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Maria, you read. Next one will give him. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, "This is a desert place, and now the time is far past." Okay. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto whom? Came unto Jesus and said. what this is a desert place and now the time is far past okay then yes. read the next verse send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat okay so what is the disciples giving suggestion to jesus send them away that they may go into the villages into the cities and buy themselves bread and for their families and for their children they'll buy themselves bread and eat why why is he saying this because if they are going to give them food to eat it's going to cost a lot right right yes yes people yes give more than 5000 because they were only 5000 men then women and children and the the wives and the children it would be a very multiple crowd a very big crowd and now when they are in this crowd jesus is saying see the 37th verse anyone wants to read can i read yeah yeah read it he answered and said unto them give you them to eat and they say unto him shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat yeah should then, i continue yeah okay continue. he he said unto them how many loaves have you go and see and when they knew they said five and two fishes yeah then uh, and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green uh, can you scroll it down yes yeah okay by companies upon the green grass and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties yeah and then... when he and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided he among them all yeah then they did all eat and were filled yeah read up to and they okay and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fishes and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5000 men praise god okay so here we see from the 37th verse jesus is telling them give them to eat 
don't scroll up just keep it from 37 to 44 praise god yeah and then jesus and they asking jesus is saying unto them okay you can't because they're saying how can we go and have 200 penny worth of bread so what did jesus tell them to do jesus told them to go and see whether the people have loaves okay because at that time loaves would be their bread they would eat yes yeah and when yeah. they, they say five and two fishes so how many loaves five loaves how many fishes two, two fishes and what did jesus tell them to do sit down upon the companies sit down on the green grass now if you have five loaves how many people can eat of five loaves two three two ten. three five one ten. loaf yeah the most ten ten yeah maximum ten correct yes yes this knows they have five five loaves and two fishes two fishes how many people can eat three people correct yeah yeah yes but see here, okay, what is he saying over here? He made them sit down upon the companies, upon the green grass. So what is giving him such confidence that this five loaves and two fishes will be able to feed more than 5,000 people? Is it possible? No. Not no. at all, right? Yes. No. That's why I ask you, how many people it will last for? Maximum 10? <laughs> yes. The yes. food, correct? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. But why is Jesus telling them to sit down? He made them sit down upon companies on the green grass and they sat down in ranks. Ranks means groups of hundreds and fifty. So fifty people, hundred people, they sat down. Okay. See the confidence of Jesus. Did Jesus doubt? No. 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 Was he looking at what he did not have or was he looking at what he has? What he has. What he has. What he had. Only five, five loaves, two fish. Two fishes. Yeah. How many times we look on what we don't have, including me, even I do this. How many times we look at what we don't have? Every Most time. of the times. Most of the times, right? We look at what we don't have. We look at what we are lacking, correct? Yes. yes. Think about what God has already given us? No. That's a hard and hard. A person yes. Hard and hard is looking at what he doesn't have instead of looking at what he has. Now here, Jesus is telling them, give you them to eat because he's purposely seeing, he's testing them to see what is their response to a lack and what is their response to a situation. Okay? And this is the first time. They said, I, how will we give them to eat? Okay? They failed. It's okay. Jesus gave, Jesus taught them. First, he has to teach, no? So he taught them what to do in the midst of trials and tribulations. What did he taught hmm. them? Focus on what God has already blessed you. Even though you don't have, focus on what you God has already given it to yes. you. Yes? yes? Yes. Yeah. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and two fishes divided he among them all. See how much confidence Jesus had. He's giving, 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 giving it to the and the disciples are giving it to the people and they are giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and, giving, and it's just multiplying is just increasing now here we see it is saying when we had taken the five loaves and two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed he hmm. he he was focused on what he had and that's why it he was able to give thanks to the lord how many times we focus on what we don't have and because we focus on what we don't have, we start, you know, we, 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 we worry and we look and we go into, you know, we start thinking that I don't have this, I don't have that. Every time we have what we have and give thanks to the Lord. How many times we focus on what we have and how many times we focus on what we don't have? 
most of the times what we don't have what we don't have and that's why because if i'm going to focus on what i have then i'm going to praise the father yes yes but because i'm focusing on what i don't have that's why now i'm no longer praising the father but instead what i'm doing i'm grumbling to the father saying i don't have this i don't have that praise god yeah. yes yes now example we are imagine okay we are all going to this retreat okay all of us, there are 18 participants all of 18 of us are going to listen to papa dancing okay and, okay and someone okay we'll keep mari aunty mari aunty knows that the class will go for long hours because if papa starts preaching he will not stop he'll take for long time so what mari aunty does is she takes food for herself and goes <laughs> yes baba she takes food for herself and goes only for herself ah huh? she takes and she goes and all of us go without food thinking that oh there'll be break oh there will be food and we just go and then we are going we are sitting there and he's teaching for long hours okay long, long 10 hours 12 hours he's teaching over there okay and now there is no food now you are thinking like a fool i came without food i should have brought food right yes you are thinking over there like a fool i came what what was i thinking yeah yes yes what will i eat now i'm so hungry yes because 12 hours 13 hours you have not eaten anything and finally the break has come and you want to eat something now imagine imagine mommy auntie has taken that food and we see by our own eyes there are there are so many multitude of people okay there are 7000 people example and there is an 18 of us are part of it and we go okay and we see that little food reaching out to the 7000 people including you and me okay including all yeah. of us what will happen what will happen how will you be how will your condition be you will be so surprised you will be so amazed you will yes. be so honest you will be so astounded you will be so surprised saying you will be so shocked saying wow now the disciples are with jesus all this time but they know that he is the son of god they know that he is the messiah but they don't have that close relationship they just know him but they don't really know his nature and now when they are seeing these food multiplying they must be thinking wow lord you are really the son of god you will say that right lord you are really the son of god you are really the anointed one you'll be thinking in that way correct yes yes yeah yes god that's what happened over here we would be so amazed we would be so astonished now here jesus is acting as if there is no lack jesus is acting how as if there is no lack how he is acting as if there is no lack he is acting as if there is food see here and they did all eat and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes now example you you are with jesus and you are one of his disciples and it's not written in the word but how i like to see is jesus must be telling the disciples go collect all the leftovers correct mm. what gave him that faith to tell to the disciples example go and collect the leftovers take up the baskets and go what gave him that faith is there any is there any expectation to get any leftover yeah no, no. no why no because there are only five loaves more than 5000 people nearly 10000 people if you double it up and now because there is no food and you are seeing this food multiplying and now when you are seeing this food there are leftovers even 12 baskets 12 baskets big baskets of leftovers what will be your condition you would be so surprised you will be so amazed and you see how jesus is 
acting yes yes how many times we have come to the retreat our back is heal our leg is heal when we go back home the pain comes back how many times we say like this you healed me last week you have healed me now how many times we say like that if we have received a healing and we go back and the pain comes again how many times we say oh lord you healed me last week if you have if you have healed me last week you have healed me now if you have healed me yesterday you have healed me now how many times do we say like that or how many times we say oh the pain has come i have to go and get treatment yes no no yes do we do that yeah i have we have all that especially before we came into the world now what are we doing we are acting as if there is a lack but jesus was acting as if there is no lack that's why the scripture says rejoice in the lord sometimes right yes yes, yes god now i came to know how many of you rejoice are... always right yeah only priya spotted everyone yes. is saying yes <laughs> The word of God. Can you put that Philippians four four? The word of God does not say rejoice in the Lord sometimes. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Hmm. Yes. It is rejoice in the Lord sometimes, and again I say rejoice. Yeah. Always. Always. All. Always. Rejoice in the Lord when my friend friend speaks to me. Rejoice in the Lord when I get the good news. Rejoice in the Lord when I get healed. Rejoice in the Lord when someone is talking to me. Yes, is that what the word mm. is? Or rejoice. Always. So Jesus, if there was a lack or if there was no lack, was he still rejoicing? Yes. Yes. If there was a problem or even if there was no problem, was he still rejoicing? Yes. Aren't we supposed to do the same? Whether there is lack or there is no lack, I'm still supposed to rejoice. I'm still supposed to give thanks. I'm still supposed to praise Him. That's what Jesus did. Praise God! Are you understanding? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to this Mark chapter six. Praise God. Okay, forty-five. Put the next verse. We'll see the next part of this. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before and to Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. Praise God. So, yes. constrain means what? He Forced them. Limited. Oh, okay. Forced. Forced. Yeah. And he forced them. Forced his disciple. Now, when when you have to force a person, when they are not willing to do it. When they are not willing to do it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Now, why? As I, these disciples are very good, good fishermen. Correct. Yeah. So how would you like to see it? These fishermen seeing the sky, they can tell whether there's going to be a storm or not. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, because they're very good fishermen. Correct. That's how I like. Yes. It. That's why they were not willing to go into the boat, to go into the ship, because they know that there is a storm, which is coming. But Jesus told them to go. Did they obey? Yes. Did they rebel? Yes. yes. Did they rebel? No. 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 Okay. Does anyone want to read the next verse? Yes, yeah, Stephen. Yes, yeah, Stephen. Which verse? Forty-six. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Okay. Yeah. Then. And when even was come. The ship 
was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. Yeah, then? And he saw them toiling and growing for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he cometh in unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. Yeah, then? Uh, there is the... Can you go a little up? Because I'm not able to see it. Can you scroll down? But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. Yeah, okay. So Jesus sent the people away. They were feeded. Okay. The five, five loaves, two fishes were spread among them. They ate it. And now Jesus is sending them away. He's telling his disciples, go, and he forced them to go into the ship to the other side to Bethsaida. And when he's doing that, now, when even, now, he's going, he's sending the people away, and he's departing into a mountain to pray. Okay? And now, when even was come, does anyone know what even means? Evening. Evening. Mm. So, when evening was come, they are still in the ship and the ship was in the middle of the sea now. It was in the midst of the sea and he was alone in the mountain praying on the land. Yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. So, Jesus went, okay, and Jesus is praying in the mountain, and now they are going to the other side and to Bethsaida, and the wind is contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night, in the, in the middle of the night, what does Jesus do? Jesus prays, and Jesus now comes to them, comes into the boat. How? Walking, walking up the sea, walking on the water, and he would nearly have passed by them. And now, when they saw him, when, they, when the disciples saw Jesus walking upon the sea, they thought it was a ghost and they cried out. Now, what you will be, if, if you are in that situation and you are experiencing the storm and you are trying to row and trying to get to the other side or trying to get to any kind of land, and when you're trying to get, you are just, the storm is getting higher and higher and higher. And now it is pitch dark because first thing it is in the night. So it's pitch dark. And you can only see when there is a lightning. Okay? And now you are seeing... When there is a lightning, it comes and goes. You are seeing someone walking upon the sea. And who is that? Jesus. You Jesus. Are... Come on. How can a person walk upon the sea? That means it should be a ghost. And now you are so scared. What the disciples must be thinking? The disciples must be thinking, is this the last day of my life? Because there is a ghost coming. The lightning, the storm is coming. They are sinking. Every area, they are just thinking correct yes yeah. yes and here here we see it saying but when they saw him walking upon the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out they were crying out for their life yes and their response yes. would be scared they would be afraid they would be fearf fearful they would be worried they would be even heartbroken because they would be worried how, you know, there's a storm over there and also there is this ghost coming towards us. So every side there is something happening and everything is going contradicting to their will and all that is happening. Yes? Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, 
Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Praise God. Praise God. So, so here we see the word of God is saying, they, when they saw Jesus, that it was not a ghost, but it was only Jesus, their hearts were very much troubled. They were like, how come it's only Jesus? I thought it was a ghost and it's only Jesus. And now immediately Jesus is talking with them and the first word he says unto them is be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Why? Because he is trying to tell them, if you are going to be in fear, now what I am going to speak to you will be of no benefit. But if you are going to be in joy, that's why the word of God says we saw rejoice in the Lord always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. And he went up went up unto them into the ship and the wind ceased and they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. They were so amazed in themselves thinking that how come when Jesus came, the wind ceased, everything is so calm. Everything is just so calm. And that's why they were amazed. So, there was the, you know, there were 5,000 people, pile of two fishes that they did not expect. And now see over here. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. So they saw the miracle of the loaves. They did not expect. Then they saw Jesus coming on the water. That also they did not consider. Why? Because their heart was, was hardened. hardened. Praise God. Now, thank you, Jesus. Now, here we see the word of God is saying, they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. You know who's a person who's amazed? A person who is amazed is a person who has hardened his heart. When a person has hardened his heart, okay, what does that prove? That, that shows that he is not expecting and he is not considering for something good to happen. He is not expecting for healing to happen. He is not expecting for something that is good to happen. That's a person that's hard in his heart. That's why when a person sees a miracle, they get so amazed, they get so surprised, they get so shocked. It's because their hearts are hardened. Even I had done that. We all had done. Um, we get so amazed when signs and wonders happen. It's because our hearts are hardened. It's a Christian's life. A Christian's life is a life of supernatural miracles. It should not be something new to us. It should be something that is our, our, day, our, way, our way of living. That's why what did you write down in the very, very beginning when we started? What did you write down? You wrote down, they are focused on other ways of life rather than God's way. God's way of life is for us to see miracles. I should not be amazed. Every day, every moment, every second of my life, I should see miracles happening. I should not be amazed when a miracle happens. When a miracle is not happening, then I should be amazed. How come this should happen? This, this should happen according to the truth, according to the system, this should work. Yes. Hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Okay, you can write down, consider, the word consider. What do you mean by the word consider? Acknowledge. Ponder upon. Yeah. Meditate, ponder, yeah. Consider, write down. Think of, okay. Consider means to ponder, to examine, 
Consider means to ponder, to examine. Consider means to ponder, to examine, to study. Consider means to ponder, to examine, to study, to learn, to learn. Consider means to ponder, to examine, to study, to learn, to know. To know, to understand, to understand, to understand, to research, to research, to find out, to find out, to meditate, to meditate about something or on about something or on something about someone or on something about something or on someone about something or on someone so how many times we research about the problem about the sickness how many times we try to find out about the sickness how many times to try to understand the sickness how many times we try to know the sickness what are we doing we are considering that sickness i can either consider god's word or i can consider the sickness higher than god's word i can consider the problem higher than god's word and many times you know what we consider we consider higher god the things of this world rather than god's word that's what happened here. They considered not the miracle of the loaves. Why? Because they had to harden. Instead of them focusing on what Jesus was doing, they were focused more on the problem. They were considering the problem. They were researching the problem. They were meditating more on the problem rather than God's promise. They were not focused on what God, what Jesus was doing, how Jesus multiplied the loaves and how Jesus was teaching them. Praise God. Thank Praise you. God. You know, if their hearts would be sensitive in the midst of trials and tribulations, here, when they were in the ship, they would expect Jesus to come. And when they're in that, uh, when there were only five loaves and two fishes, they would consider, they would expect for a miracle. But because their hearts were hardened, they were, they were not focused on what God has said, but they were focused on what the problem was saying what they can see, what the physical senses were speaking to them, what the devil was speaking to them. The devil was telling them so many things. You don't have food. You don't have. And through through the disciples, God, the devil was speaking to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Then, how will you give the people the food? But did Jesus accept it? No. Jesus was not focused on the problem. Instead, Jesus was focused more on the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes? Are you understanding? Yes. Yes? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Now, you see over here, the crowd cried out because they thought it was a ghost. Why did they do that? Because their hearts were, were hardened. Their hearts were not sensitive. Their hearts were more sensitive to the problem and hardened to God's word. That's what we saw in James chapter 4 or 7. Can you go back over there? Can someone read? Anyone, just unmute and read. Submit yourself. Submit yourself. Yeah, yeah, Maria. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. In other words, make your heart sensitive to God. Harden your heart to the devil and now he will flee from you. 
then i make but when i make my heart sensitive to the devil then my heart is hardened to god's word how do i make my heart hardened to the devil when i submit myself to the word of god how how can i submit to god to submit to god is submit to his word how can i be sensitive to god sensitive to god means being sensitive to what his word is saying most of the time we don't understand what god's word is saying and we most of the time focus on the problem focus on the current sit- sickness disease poverty and all that instead of focusing on god's word yes yes yeah yeah okay let's mark 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 chapter 8 we saw mark chapter 6 now let's go to mark chapter 8 verse 1 we will continue this mark chapter 8 um next week let's go but we will see a brief introduction okay in those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them so again the similar situation happened no food big multitude and he calls the disciples unto him and said unto them yeah priya you wanted to read you can read the second verse okay i have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me 3 days and have nothing to eat yeah and if i said should i continue yeah read the third okay okay and if i send them away fasting to their own houses they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far Let's go. Okay, we will study this next week. Okay, I'm just giving an introduction. Okay, an outline. Okay, so here there is a big multitude, but no food. This is the first we saw Mark chapter six. Six. So Mark chapter eight. Six. Now that happened first. This happened second. Now again there is. a big 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 multitude but there is no food and now jesus is trying to give them so many hints so many clues saying i have compassion on them they have been with me how many days 3 days here if we go for a retreat we say it is 1 o'clock 1:30 <laughs> 1 o'clock pa- papa johnson is not leaving for lunch or that person is not leaving <laughs> it is 10 o'clock he's not leaving to sleep yeah <laughs> many times if we go for a three day retreat we would say like that it's 1 o'clock you're not giving for lunch you're not leaving for break is taking it long <laughs> so true yeah if jesus would have been in that papa johnson's place no he would have taken three days three nights no food <laughs> yes. after three days after three days he realizes that there is no food after three days <laughs> yeah jesus is retreats are very different from ours praise god <laughs> praise god <laughs> praise god okay he is giving them so many hints now first he is saying i have compassion then he is saying they have been 3 days and i have nothing to eat then he is saying if i send them away fasting to their own houses they'll faint by the way and the fourth one is saying so many have come from far so many clues is giving them you know jesus when he asked them do can you give them food to eat jesus in in mark chapter 6 jesus was actually test, testing them you know why he was testing them yeah he was testing them to see what are what is their response what is their corresponding action to a problem yes but it was not with the carnal mind he wanted them to know he wanted them he wanted to teach them how to respond in the midst of trials and tribulations that's why he is going on and saying you give them to eat and he saying all those things yes mm. yes 
Yeah. Did you understand? I'll stop here because this will study next week. Okay, praise God. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Elston. Any doubts, any questions? No, it was good. It was very understandable. Yeah. Maria has a testimony. Yes. Yeah. It's a little long though. Is it okay? Uh, the time? Yeah. yeah, yes. It is, Baba. Right. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so this is a uh, since last year it has in the I already shared that uh, last year I made a vision for my class ten that uh, uh, and before making the vision my mother had told me that drilled into me that you have to put in effort and you have to study you can't just expect to sit back and God will give you marks so I said okay and she was constantly telling me before even I made the vision she would be like you have to study be prepared to study so I was like okay. So uh, she kept on telling me, and I made the vision that uh, uh, um, I would I I uh, uh, three things. One is that I would get ninety five percent and above, and also that the timetable of the examinations we would have holidays in between. So I had asked for this and enough time to study. Uh, and I had held on two verses of Genesis thirty nine one and three. That uh, because the Lord is with me, in me, for me, I am prosperous and successful. Everything I do will be successful in my hands because the Lord is with me. The next Exodus 35 verse 31, the Lord has filled me with a divine spirit, with skill, knowledge, and intelligence in every kind of craft. Luke 2.52, I have favor with God, I have favor with man, and I have good understanding. So this I made last year in May, around May and April. And I even started studying properly. When my mother would remind me that study, do it, keep up with your work, keep your projects up to date. So after that, one of my teachers had come home and they had said that, Maria, how are your studies going? And they also said that when I come in March, I'm, I'm sure that you will bring 95%. And my mom and I looked at each other and, because that was the exact number that I had written in my vision. Two more people confirmed the same. It is not that I went according to prophecy, but it is just that they were confirming the con they were like confirmation to the vision I had uh, made uh, according to God's word. So uh, we had uh, two sets of exams. They were pre boards. So uh, and uh, I had one wrong misconception that uh, that on my result I will get ninety five, but my mom mom said that you will not get ninety five. You have already got ninety five. So with that mindset, I went, I gave my exams and uh, for the final exams and the timetable came out, there were at least like minimum of two holidays between each paper. And this has never happened. This has never happened. Even for maths and history, we had seven, eight days to study. So, uh, and then uh, I remember this vision and I shared it with my friend, only one friend, because she was sharing about her sister and uh, that she was not able to get into a college. So I said, see, I made a vision and this happened. Now I'm waiting for the second part of the vision. That is my result. And so um, uh, like this. So then uh, because of COVID, these exams were canceled. But the timetable had come out. So uh, that was one testimony. Then for the last two months, doubts kept creeping up in my mind that um, uh, maybe they because they were considering the ninth average also class ninth average and I had not done well in ninth I only got into the world in class ten so but uh, sister Jocelyn had said that you can only fight thoughts with words so you have to open your mouth and speak what you want to see not what you see so I continuously uh, did that and today uh, that I have got ninety five I've got ninety five already because God has blessed the seed which was my effort. And uh, today my result came out and I got 97% overall. Wow, praise God. Twice wow. of what I ex expected. Right. I shared praise this testimony God. with my friends and they were like, wow, that was so amazing. Even my yeah. mother shared it with people. Yeah, and it's the vision and your confidence, you see, and you opened your mouth and you spoke the word. Yes. Yes. Praise God, wonderful. Wow, that's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Okay, anyone else?
All right. Uh, Priya, can we say the closing prayer, Baba? Uh, yes, Santi. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful session that we had, Lord. We thank you for the preaching of the beautiful gospel by this anointed warrior, Alliston. Lord, help us to apply whatever we learned in today's class, especially on hardness of heart. As your word says in Isaiah, today if you heard his voice, harden not your hearts. Help us, Lord, to be sensitive to your voice in every circumstance, especially in the ones where the pressure is high, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, so today is Kian's birthday.